It's SSD data recovery time. This one's been mailed in by one of our viewers. It's from a HP laptop. It was made in April 2021. It's lasted three years. Let's take a look. So this SSD was made by Kyozia. If you haven't heard of these guys, it's because it's the new spin-off brand name from Toshiba. And this is the name they're going to start using for their memory. So it comes from Kyaku, which is Japanese for memory, and Axia, which is Greek for value. So uh, memory value. That's the new Toshiba brand name they came up with, and this is how they want to play making SSD technology now. So this SSD is 256 gigabytes. It's PCI Express and uses the NVMe protocol. It's got a power rating of 3.3 volts at 2 amps. So let's connect 3.3 volts to this and let's do some tests, find out what's wrong with it. So under the sticker, we can see the main controller chip for this SSD. It's a Silicon Motion 2263. And this one is a XT version, which makes it the cheaper one that doesn't have DRAM. So they don't put a DRAM cache on here to make it cheaper. It has less performance. Uh, its brother would be the 2263EN, so that's the performance model that has the DRAM cache, which they have deleted for this one. Up in this area here, we have all our power management for the SSD, and down here we've got a single memory chip on it. Let's have a look with the thermal camera and power this SSD up. Now instantly to the top right, we've found our problem. Do you see that little red glowing spot? That is a capacitor that has gone short to ground. That's this capacitor here that glowed up with heat and it looks kind of very nasty as well. It looks like it's been discharging. Let's uh, see if it's shorter to ground. So we'll probe both sides of it. That's shorter to ground. So it's definitely shorted to ground and causing a problem. It looks like it's to decouple or smooth out this inductor here and it's also put it short to ground. So you can see the inductor on this side, it's not shorted to ground, so it's shorted all this side out. I'll remove it and see if that clears the short. Let's test with it removed. Okay, we've got ground here. Okay, and the short's gone. So it looks like this side's ground. This side's okay. Let's find another capacitor to fix it with. So I'm just gonna steal this similar size capacitor from this hard drive PCB. Should work. I don't know what the capacitance value is, but we just need to get somewhere to get the data off it. So I have the multimeter in beep test mode or short circuit mode and we're going to probe. So we, we get a beep here that's good because that's the ground side. We don't get a beep on, on this other side now, that's good. Okay, this inductor here is no longer shorted to ground. And we'll check all the other caps. Because if you remember, a lot of these cause the whole short to ground. There, yeah, perfect. Ground, not ground. So it looks like that short circuit's disappeared. And it was probably draining all the energy so the CPU, the little controller, couldn't power up. I'm feeling confident this is going to work now. Let's plug it in. We're getting a full ID. This is good news from the SSD, but can we access the data? Let's explore. We've got a partition table, and we've got a Windows NTFS with BitLocker. So we need to decrypt it. Now the user has given me the key. And there it is, guys. We have successfully fixed this SSD and got access to all the user data again. If you need to use our mail-in data recovery service, I'll leave a link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next video.